Amen. We want to feel after God today in this house. And uh, we want God to work. This is just not a exercise for us that we do on uh, Sundays. We come together. We, we want our God to work. We really do. We really do. Uh, remember, Sister Dell, is, is it your cousin who has stage 4 cancer? What, what was her name again? Karen. Okay, remember her in prayers. You, God bring her in remembrance to you. She's dealing with stage 4 cancer. I just hate that cancer business, man. I hate it. Amen. And, uh, but it's what we face in this world. But our God can do anything. So I notice, well, Robert, it's nice to see you today. Wow. Praise God. It's good to see Nick here too. Amen. And uh, those of you, others that are here, good to see you. Praise God. Let's just take a moment right now. Let's just feel after God in this room. Can we do that? Can we just feel after God? We do need you this morning, Father. Of ourselves, we're nothing. You're everything. Hallelujah. And I, I come to you this morning in this room. Mm. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Mm. Hallelujah. Oh, my Father, my Father. Work amongst us, God. Work amongst us. Be glorified in this room today, my Father. Be glorified in this room today, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. When we when we gather together, one of the keys to receiving from God is getting where God's at. Amen. Uh, I know. I know a lot of you don't use a radio anymore. You got all kinds of stuff you use. You know. But I, I'm from the radio generation. Hallelujah. I still listen a lot to the radio. Amen. And, and not my car even. I just I listen to a lot of the radio. Amen. And, uh, you know, there's that tuning. You used to call it a knob or a dial. Amen. And I have, I have, I have my dad's portable radio come from, it's a radio shack. They don't even sell them anymore. But I, I can about pick up anything on that thing. Amen. It just headed for for years now, and uh, you know it takes four double A batteries, and I can I just you know a, a lot of stuff today. In fact, I've noticed something about the radios they build today. This the interference gets to them, and uh, I just I had uh, near Marcy and Tony, my my brother Tim listens to the radio too, and he. Uh, and, and the radio, whatever, there's inter the, whether it's the steel, the fluorescent lights, but it just interfered with the stations that he loved to listen to. And then, then Marcy gave me an old radio, man, the kind that, you know, most people are tossing out, and uh, gave, gave him an old radio. And, my God, that thing, it didn't matter if there's steel or whatever's there. It just, you could tune it in. You could hear, you weren't hearing, you know, all that kind of business that drives you crazy. Amen, and it just, amen. I, I guess, where are you going with this, Pastor? I guess, listen, some of you new ones, some of you young ones need to learn how to tune in to God. All right, to tune in, just get where God's at today, all right? Let's get where God's at today, okay? In this room, yeah, yeah. You know, I, you know, I don't know how, I, I don't think we can teach you this skill. All right. I, if we could teach the skill of, I, I'd teach it. If I, if but, I can just tell you that we can tune into him today, and I mean we can get where he's. And, and part of it's come because we praise him, and amen. And then part of it also come because we actually pray outside of this room, <laughs> not just in here, but outside of this room, amen. And just, uh, amen. And we just we learn how to get where God's at. Because God's going someplace today. You know that. God has something in mind for us even here this morning in this room. Amen. He, he's here. And when God is here, I, I, I know, you know, anything can take place. But amen. But you see, I've seen people, amen, that, that God moves on one, one person and 
the next person he doesn't move on and on I asked the question are you being unfair God and and the real answer is no they just didn't tune in all right so are you are you tuned in this morning now I'm ready to sing an old song turn your lights down low <laughs> and listen to your radio get in touch with God <laughs> turn your radio on <laughs> anybody ever remember that song uh, the people look at me like he, we knew he was gonna lose it it just we didn't know it was gonna be this morning <laughs> hallelujah but oh it's important today the stuff you're dealing with, the stuff you, that's coming your way, is, it's, you've got to understand it's, it's more than just things of this world. But there's a supernatural thing happening in this world today. There's, there's forces that are against you. All right? And you cannot stand on your own. You can't stand on your own. You cannot stand on your own. If you think you can stand on your own, you're, you're a fool. You, you need God. You need God because what you're facing is, is more than just flesh and blood. The, the warfare we're in today has nothing to do with flesh and blood. It has everything to do with principalities and wickedness and high places. Amen. And, and we as God's people, we have got to be tuned in. Amen. And so here we are today. And just, so you have to, get, can you help me preach this morning? I need all the help I can get. I need all the help I can get. I need God. So we're going to simply turn to one portion, just one verse today. Philippians 4.13. Just one verse. Philippians 4.13. Hallelujah. 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 This is the Apostle Paul. This, some people's concept of this verse is a direct contradiction to what Paul's talking about. Amen. Because they, 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 they read the first part of verse and they stop. I can do all things. They stop. That's a contradiction to what Paul is saying. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. And that's how I stand here this morning. Not in my own abilities, but through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. I want to preach to you just for a little while this morning on the five I can'ts. The five I can'ts. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The five I can'ts. Would you, would you pray with me right now in this room? The five I can'ts. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Help us, God. Help us, God. Help us, God. Today, today, God, in this room. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The five I can'ts, God. My God, my God, my God. The five I can'ts. Jesus, speak to us in this room. Speak to us in this room. Speak to us in this room, God. Today. Today, God. Today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You may be seated in this room. I think it's significant to note that in the scripture God seems to call busy people alright so if you're lazy and don't want to do anything well, I'm just telling you in the scripture God seems to call busy people Gideon he's threshing grain Samuel he's serving in the tabernacle David what's he doing he's caring for the sheep Elisha, he's just simply plowing. Amen. And then the four apostles, Peter, James, and John, they're managing their fishing business. And of course, Matthew, the tax collector. He just seems to call busy people. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. So just, just hang out with us today. I, amen. So if you're busy, that's a good thing. Because in the midst of your busyness, God just may call you even today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. The Bible tells us in Exodus chapter 3 that Moses was tending the flock of, his, of Jethro, his father-in-law. Okay? And he's in the 
back of the desert. Okay. He's come to Horeb, the mountain of God. And uh, while he's there, uh, he's had 40 years of experiencing tending sheep. Okay. Night and day in the field. Okay. Now, the Bible doesn't go into detail about these individuals, what they experienced. Amen. I think God leaves it up to us. They are just like you and me. They are flesh and blood like us. They have thoughts, good and bad thoughts. Amen. In fact, we're told of Elijah. It says that when he prayed and it stopped raining, it says in James that he was a man just like us with like passions. Just, just living life. And so Moses is in the desert. He's there again, we say, day and night. I, I don't believe for a moment that this man just wasn't thinking about God any time. I think out on that desert, he meditated a lot about God. Thought about God. Amen. Thought about his failure in Egypt and thought about God. The suffering of his people. The Bible tells us in the 11th chapter of, of uh, Hebrews that he made a choice to go with the people of God rather than to, amen, enjoy sin for a season. Amen. And, and that was a significant thing in his life. Amen. If you were basing your choice off of what you could see, all he could see was men being beaten and men being truly created and treated and and men and women amen living under the harsh cruel dictatorship of the egyptian pharaoh he saw that he was a part of that amen he lived amen with that every day amen i i i deal with men that that they 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 got issues like court dates and they got issues like you know what's the judge going to say and and they discuss Oh, they don't discuss it in the Bible study, but they discuss it. They'll discuss, amen, that, you know, well, what kind of sentence do you think you're going to get it? And how long is it going to be? And, well, what is this judge like? And who's your lawyer? And on and on and on. And, and those things will literally consume them for hours as they rehash their case and what they're dealing with. Now, you say, what's they got to do with us? We do the same thing. Our problems may be different. Our situations may be different. But we spend hours hashing over in our mind how we're going to deal with some specific issue. We do. And don't tell me you don't. You do. And so Moses was like us. It's in the back side of the desert. The Bible tells us in this chapter... That as he was going through his chores of the day, he saw a bush that was on fire. Now we have a little bit more information than he had. Because the Bible tells us it was the angel of the Lord that appeared to him in a flaming fire in the midst of a bush. Hallelujah. And so he saw it. Amen. And he did more than see it. He approached it. And we preached about this in the past. Verse 4 says to us, So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him. He was just going through the daily business of being a shepherd. And he saw this bush burning and not being consumed. And he turned aside to see it. And when he did that, God would call him, oh, brothers and sisters, today in this house, if we could only get sensitive enough about God, that when God appears to us and when God comes to us, we'll do more than just amen, go on with our daily chores, but we'll turn aside to see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I do believe we have to live. I do believe... We have to take care of our families. I do believe there are many things that we have to do in this day and age. But my God, when God begins to move upon us, we need to turn aside to see. Hallelujah. 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 Now, what, what, what Moses saw was this insignificant bush. All right. But it had been ignited. 
and it was being turned into a miracle. He saw these flames coming from this bush, and this bush was not consumed. Amen. What Moses didn't understand, that he was the bush, and God was going to take an insignificant bush, and he was going to light it on fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what he wanted to do to Moses. He wanted to make Moses a miracle. I'll say it to you this morning in this house. He didn't call you just to sit here on chairs. He called you to be a miracle in this day. He called you to be ignited with the fire of the Holy Ghost today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so this, this bush was a picture of what God had planned for Moses. I mean, he's weak. He's a weak bush. But God is the empowering fire. Hallelujah. And with God's help, Moses can accomplish anything. Hence, our text this morning. I can do all things through Christ. Hallelujah. Who strengthens me. Oh my God, brothers and sisters, if we only knew who was on our side, if we only knew what God wanted to do through us, if we only knew the flame and the fire and the force and the power of God in our lives, we'd do a whole lot more than we're doing right now. We'd quit fussing and complaining and start doing what God's called us to do. My God. But he didn't understand. He didn't understand that bush burning with fire and then he hears a voice and the voice says to him in verse 8 I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from the land to a good and a large land to a land flowing with milk and honey amen and then he tells him where this land is it's the land of the Canaanites the Hittites the Jebusites all, all the ites are there everybody that opposes God is in that land my God, there's so many little sidelines I could run today. I mean, you understand, the reason you need power is because there's an enemy against you. You're, you're not fighting, I mean, against flesh and blood. You're fighting against things that can destroy you. You're fighting against something that wants to take all your spiritual strength if it can. And if you're going to fight on your own abilities, you're not going to be able to win whatsoever. But I can do all things. Through Christ, who strengthens me. And so here he is. Amen. God says, I've come down to deliver. And that's, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. It's good for God to come down and deliver. And may I say today, he's still in the delivering business. He's still in the delivering business. If you really want to be delivered, you can be delivered. If you enjoy your bondage, you'll stay in your bondage. But if you want to be delivered, you will be delivered. Because our God is a delivering God. Yes, he is. He can heal you. He can do a miracle in your life. He can set you free. He can fill you with the Holy Ghost this morning in this house. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. When you read the text here, you see, amen, that God assures Moses that these are my people. And they have been suffering and that he has felt the suffering of the Jews in Egypt. Now he's ready to act. Now he's ready to lead them out. And Moses... You're my chosen leader. That's what it says in verse number 10. Come now, therefore, and I will send you. Hallelujah. 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 Now, we're not there. We haven't dealt with 40 years of sheep. We haven't dealt with 40 years of reviewing in our mind how we should have did it. 
dealt with 40 years of obscurity. Back here in the desert and everybody's forgot what we were and what we did. And, and you need to understand that Moses was somebody. That he was not just a, amen, just a Jewish man that got taken, amen, into the Pharaoh's house. But he had been a warrior. He had been a man that did things. He, in fact, if you read history, he had been involved in saving Egypt from their enemies himself. And he was like a general. Amen. But now God's put him out there in the backside of the desert. So I've chosen you. Can you imagine how he must have felt? Hold it. Did I hear correctly? Amen. You. Where's he at? There ain't nobody around but me. I sort of like when God puts the finger on us. Some of you are good at weaseling out. You're like mer mercury. You get it in your hand and it just slides. You can't seem to squeeze it. You can't seem. It just slides. My God, I'm, I'm tired of being mercury in the hands of God. I want God to work. I want God to work in my life. I want God to use me. I want God not to pass me by. Hallelujah. So I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so when he hears that statement, I will send you the astonishment that must have come to him at that moment. Why would God choose a failure? Now, you're not going to be real honest with me, nor am I going to ask you, amen, to be real transparent by raising your hands. But I'm dealing with people this morning in this house that you look at your life, even your walk with God, and the thing that stands out to you, I have failed him. I have fallen short. I have not listened. I have not done what he wanted me to do. Amen. I'm, I'm not worth much in his kingdom. I'm a failure. Well, if you feel like that, I think you feel a little bit like Moses felt. Hallelujah. So, what did Moses do? Well, Moses, first of all, should have begun to rejoice. Why? Because God was answering prayer. He should have rejoiced. He said, finally, my prayers have been heard in heaven. Hey, my God. And God's going to step on the scene. And God's going to deliver. Hallelujah. And he should have submitted to the will of God. He should have said to God, as Isaiah said, here I am. Send me. I know nobody else knows where I'm at, but you know where I'm at, God. And here I am. Send me. But instead, he argues with the Lord. All right? He's trying to escape the divine call of God for his life to be a part of the rescue of Israel from slavery. He's arguing with God. Now, 40 years before, he had been an impetuous horse that said, I'll kill every Egyptian if I have to to deliver him. But now he's on the backside of a desert. And instead of being an impetuous horse, he's like a stubborn mule. Resisting God. My God. Are, are you still with me? Is this all right? Okay. This message is about the five I can'ts, by the way. And so, you can read in chapter 3 and 4, five things that Moses would say to God why he can't do what God's called him to do. May I remind you, many times in this message, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so what's number one reason? Here it comes. Amen. Verse 11 of chapter 3. He says to God, who am I? I am a nobody. Does that ring out for anybody in this house this morning? 
Who am I? I am a nobody. This is how Moses thought of himself. How do you think about yourself this morning in this room? How do you think about yourself? Amen. What do you think other people are thinking about you? Amen. And you probably would say, well, I'm not really important. I'm a nobody. Amen. I'm here to tell you this morning, God had spoken to Moses and that's all that he needed for the assurance of doing the job. God had called him. I wonder how many people in this audience this morning that God has dealt with you about doing something and you have told God, who am I? I'm a nobody. All I've been doing is 40 years of being a shepherd. And, and I think now the, I mean, the fire that I had to deliver Amen. God's people has been extinguished and I'm just merely trying to exist. I'm trying to, to uh, get by on my own. Anybody know what I'm talking about today in this room? Anybody, I'm not asking you to raise your hand, but any of us said to God, who am I? How can I do that? That's not possible. Amen. I can't do that kind of thing. Oh, if God's called you, brother and sister, you need to respond to God. You need to quit being that stubborn mule and you need to listen to what God is speaking to your heart even today in this room. May I ask this question? Why? Is Moses looking at himself instead of looking by faith at God? All right, let me run that by you again. A little slow there. We just we're a little behind here, and I'm trying to catch you up with me. Why is Moses looking at himself instead of looking by faith at the Lord? Because God had said to them, Amen, in this verse. In the same portion of scripture, verse 12, God had said to him, I will certainly be with you. I wonder how many times that God has called us and we heard the call, but we got so caught up in who we were, amen, that we didn't hear the rest of the message when he said to us, I will certainly be with you. Do you not understand? This morning, that when you are doing the business of our Father, He is with you. Do you not understand? Yeah, but I didn't feel Him. It wasn't like church. Most of the time, it's not going to be like church. Amen. But He's there. He's just waiting you for you to act. He's waiting for you to step out in faith. He's going to demonstrate Himself because He never fails. Amen. But we get so caught up in who we are and how insignificant we are all he needed all we need this morning is the certainty that he is with us i will be with you amen i can do all things through christ who strengthens me he said in isaiah chapter 41 fear not for i am with you be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's rejoice right now over the fact that he's with us. Let's rejoice right now that our God has called us. And we can do what he says we can do. We can be strengthened by him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who am I? Who am I? Five, number one reason why I can't. Who am I? My God. I wish I had a nickel for every time somebody in this church told me why they couldn't do something. Let's raise it up to 10 bucks. If we were at 15,000, then the nickel would be suffice. But amen. All the reasons, my God. I, I, I sit here this morning with people that are talented and gifted. And you sit on your talents. And you do nothing with your talents. And it goes back to, who am I? What can I do? Hallelujah. What can I do? 
Praise God. Now, I can admire Moses for his humility. You know, he, he recognizes that he's not, not a whole lot. Now, 40 years before, he would have told God what he was. Yeah, have you ever read Acts 7.22? Philip, when he's preaching to, to the religious leaders, he says, Moses was learned in all the wisdom of Egypt and was mighty in words and deeds. This is, this is 40 years ago, you see. Okay, but, but, uh, but now, being out there humbled in the desert in communion with God out there in the desert, he's, he's not so sure right now. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I have a sentence here I want to read to you, all right? Will this, will this bother you? A person acting in the flesh is impulsive and sees no obstacles, but a person humbly walking in the Spirit knows that the battles that lie ahead. But God keeps saying, I shall be with you. Yeah, but I'm not much, God. I shall be with you. Jesus would say in John 15 and 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. So, that's the first I can't. Who am I? What am I? The second is this. It's found... Again in verse 13, Moses says to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? You know what he's really saying? I don't know your name. I don't know who is sending me. Say, wait a minute. He knows a God. No, I don't know your name, God. What, 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 what do you mean? He's literally saying, what does your name mean? What kind of God are you? Verse 14, he says, I am who I am. Amen. That's based on a Hebrew verb. I will be what I will be. Or I will become what I will become. I am the self-existent one. Always was, always will be. Your neighbor say he's always going to be today. I am faithful and I am dependable. You know, we, we give God a lot of re religious calisthenics. Okay. We really do. Amen. And I, I love to see us worship God. That's a good thing. But do we really know who we're worshiping? Do we really understand what he is capable of? Ha has it been revealed to you what he's really like? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What does your name mean? Centuries later. Amen. When Jesus is born, it's no longer just I am that I am. It's I am the vine. I am the bread of life. And I am the light of the world. And I am that true vine. I am the way. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hey, brothers and sisters, the disciples also wanted to know who he was. He said, I am the way. Amen. He would, say to, he would say to the religious leaders that were against him, Amen. He would say to them before Abraham was, I am. And before that, before, before he even said that, he, he would say, Amen, to them, that Abraham's rejoiced to see my day. And he'd say, you're not even 50 years old. And before Abraham was, I am. They knew what he was saying. He was saying that he was the God of the Old Testament. Amen. Manifest in flesh, Jehovah with us, the eternal one, the omniscient one, the omnipresent one, the omnipotent one, who has now come to dwell amongst us. And John would say of him, we beheld his glory.
the begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Do you know who you serve today? Do you understand the importance of his name? Do you understand the importance? Do you know what Jesus literally means in the Hebrew? Jehovah, our salvation. The closest name in the Old Testament is Joshua. Hallelujah. And our God has come to be our salvation. Hallelujah. Our God has come to dwell amongst us. Our God, amen, died on the cross. Humanity, amen, blood was shed that you and I can have relationship with him. Do you know the importance of his name today? I tell you, what separates us from every denomination, we are one of the few groups of people, even in this city, that baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. They did not get in trouble. Amen. They, nowhere do you read being baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But they baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And guess where they got persecuted? They got persecuted because of the name. My God, I've lost some of you already. I've really lost you. You're not even here. Amen. Hallelujah. Ha. Ah, when that name is called over somebody, cancer's got to go. When that name is called over somebody in baptism, all the sin record is wiped out. When that name of Jesus is called in authority, every devil has to flee. Whatever you do, in word or deed, do all. Everybody say, do all. In the name of the Lord Jesus. All. Hallelujah. Oh, we are people of the name. We understand that also what comes with being people of the name. Not everybody likes us because we declare this message. Not everybody, amen, likes us to talk about Jesus' name. They just want us to refer to him as Christ. And so anytime I use Christ, I like to insert in there Jesus Christ. Because I want them to understand who I serve. And I want them to understand the name that's above every name. The name that every knee's going to bow and every tongue's going to confess at the name of Jesus. What did they forget, forbid them to do? They did not want them to teach or preach in his name. Ah, hallelujah. Ah, he said, Moses, I don't know your name. Who sended me? I know his name today. When I walk into the system, this week I'll be in there by the grace of God. I go in his name. When I'm walking through the doors, I'm saying, in the name of Jesus. Every step that I take here is in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. You understand what I'm saying, right? My God, some of you is somewhere else. I, I, don't, I don't understand how you, you could be somewhere else when somebody's talking about the name of Jesus. I don't know how you could be so disjointed in your thoughts. I don't know. Come on, when somebody starts talking about Jesus to me, it gets my attention. It makes me want to listen. It makes me want to rejoice. It makes me excited. It does something. I know about that name. I know the importance of that name. I know what the name of Jesus can do in somebody's life. I know. And so it was important when you get down there to, to Israel that's in captivity, they're going to want to know who sent you. You just tell me I am that I am has sent you. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We sit here today some of us, our faith is so shattered. Some of us, our faith is so struggling. Hey, I want you to know today, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that Christ is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. Huh. And so his second I can't was, I don't know your name. I don't know who's sending me. Tell me a little bit about yourself. My God. If he only knew. One day Moses. 
not very far in the future, you're going to hold a rod over a sea and the waters is going to depart. One day, Moses, you're going to strike a rock and out of that rock is going to come water. It's going to happen. One day, you're going to watch as I destroy your enemies who have come up behind you to destroy you. One day. My God. What, what, what are we waiting for, ladies and gentlemen? What, 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 what does God have to do? Does God have to come down and take your hand and walk you through it? He's given us his word. And God does not lie. What he wants you to do and what he wants me to do is act. Turn to your neighbor and say, you got to act, man. you got to do something here. You just can't, just can't come here in this house. And you you got to do something. You need to start to teach Bible studies. I didn't say your theories. Bible studies. You need to talk to them about that name that's above every name. You need to show them in the Word of God where, how they were baptized. You need to show them what can happen when you're in faith approaching God, that God wants to fill you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And when he does that, he's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost and you're going to speak in other tongues as his spirit. You need, you need to begin to tell people that stuff. What are you waiting for? What, what, what's going to happen? You don't understand, Pastor. I know. I know. Who am I? I tell you what I don't understand is why you don't understand who it is that's with you. But Moses had that same problem. His third reason, I, I got to hurry. This his third reason. You find it in Exodus four, verse one. Moses said to God, "Now, but suppose." They will not believe me or listen to my voice. In other words, he said to God, well, the elders, they're, they're not going to believe who I am or who you are or that you sent me. You, know, you, 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 want a, you want a little different translation to that? Okay. They will really not believe. That's what he said. They're not going to really believe. But what it really means is I do not believe. And this is an absolute statement of open unbelief. I do not believe. But he's blaming somebody else for it. They're not, they're not going to listen. They're not going to do it. You know, well, in other words, God, and he's literally saying, I, I don't believe. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the crux of the whole matter. I have seen people here that are very, very gifted that God wanted to use. But I talked to them and they'd resist. Amen. They, they, they call it humility, but really what it was is there was a focus on themselves. And true humility does not focus on itself. It focuses on God, you see. And so they, they would give all the reasons why they couldn't. God had said, in the third chapter, verse 18, then they will heed your voice. But he is saying, that, what, God, what if they don't believe me? God has already told him they will listen to you. So what does God say? What's in your hand? Turn your ears and say, what you got? What you got? Okay, well, he's going to say a rod. All right. But God takes what we have in our hands and he uses it. If we will trust him. When he says a rod, the rod is really not important. Well, it's going to turn into a snake. He's going to hold it over. He's going to hold it over the Red Sea. The rod is really not important today. Hallelujah. But in God's hand, it becomes power. Do you understand? Do you understand? Yeah, you understood. Do you understand why God gave you the Holy Ghost? Do you understand? Do you understand? Do you understand what it says in Acts one and eight? You know, 
After this, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Yeah, my God. Is God lying? I'm going to be real ugly right now. In a Bible study on Monday night, a guy, we were reading in Matthew, or no, Corinthians 6 chapter, verse 9 and 10. And he, uh, he, they're reading away, and it, it lists the sins that probably the Corinthians dealt with. And one of the sins was drunkard. And it says if they're practicing that, they'll not inherit the kingdom of God. All right. He says, I don't like that. I don't like what it says there. I asked him, is that the scripture? Well, I don't like what it says. I, I didn't ask if you liked it. I said, is that the scripture? Is that the scripture? Is that the word of God? Oh, yes, it is. Hallelujah. Sitting across the table from him was a man who has fought with the demon of alcohol. And I talked to him on uh, Thursday. I think it was Thursday. Oh, it was Friday. I, my days get confused. Friday. Hey, man, this guy used to be a brawler, a bruiser, man. He used, when, he, when he got drunk, man, they locked him up in the hole. They didn't even... They didn't even I mean, uh, take him up and, you know, get his fingerprint and go through all that. They just locked him up in the hold until he got, got sober. Because he just wanted to fight everybody. And the man said to me, I'm tired. I'm tired of the life I've lived. I'm tired. I've disappointed my mother. I'm just, I'm tired. I'm watching this man, this man who, who has spent time in prison, this man who used to think he was tough. I watch his tears, amen, begin to come down to the side of his face. What's happening? There's God at work in that situation. There's a power that's taking place. You're not in this thing alone. You are not by yourself. Amen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can. I can. Praise God. Do you know what would happen today if we all bought into the Word of God? Oh my God. I'm having a hard time with long-term apostolics right now. And I've, I'm trying to behave myself. Do you know what would happen if all of us caught on fire? Hallelujah. You see, with, with his hands, Moses had killed a man, right? You, you ever read that? Moses killed a man. Yeah. The very second miracle that Jesus, or that the Lord would show Moses, was he'd tell him to put his hand into his, into his garment. He comes out of leprosy, puts it back in, he comes out. It's now whole again. I mean, let me tell you what he's saying to Moses. I can heal your weakness of flesh. I can heal your weakness of flesh. All right, I, I got to move on. I got to move on. I got to move on here. I got I to gotta get done. Get done. Exodus 4 and 10. This is the fourth reason now. Oh my, oh, my Lord, he says, I am not eloquent, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant. But I'm slow of speech and slow of tongue. He, he's saying, I, I'm not a fluent speaker. I am not gifted. He, that's, what he, that's what he's saying. Are, are you still with me? I'm not gifted. I'm not fluent. Brother, Brother Thomas Kraft, pastor church in Jackson, Mississippi, most of you wouldn't know him. But in a service one day, he had him visiting minister, and he asked the man to stand up that was in the balcony. And the man stood up, and the whole time he's speaking, he's stammering, he's stuttering. It's painful for people to hear it. And he noticed, the, the visiting minister noticed that Brother Kraft was weeping. Yeah. And, and he's thinking, so why did he have this man stand up I mean we're we're having to suffer through this this man's speech impediment and then brother Kraft asked everybody that is 
in this church because of this man would you stand and an entire row of people stood up an entire row there was another man who couldn't talk at all do you know what he'd do back in the age of the cassette you know what a cassette is <laughs> you all know what a cassette is you probably have never heard of a 8 track have you do you know what an 8 track is I didn't Well, this, this is, this is, eight tracks were before cassettes. All right. All right. All right. And uh, he had a man that was mentally handicapped in his church. And what this man would do, he would go down by the barber shop in this little southern town with his cassette player. And he'd ask people, do you want to hear my pastor? And he'd put that cassette in and start playing his pastor preaching. How do you stand up against that when we get to heaven? A man that can't even, he's not all there, but he's taken ass. And he's used it for God. Well, I'm not fluent. I'm, I'm not gifted. We can go on and on and on and on and on about why we can't. But you see, again, the mistake you're making is you're looking at yourself instead of looking at God. Forty years before, Moses felt perfectly adequate to face the enemy on behalf of the people of God, but now he's backed off. Have you missed the message, Moses, that the I am, the miracle worker, is with you I'm asking somebody in this audience this morning have you missed the message have you missed what God is saying have you have you not understood amen that it's not based upon your eloquency it's not based upon your oratory not at all all he simply wants is a clean vessel that he can fill with his message. And do you know, do you know what Moses says to God? All right, do you know what he says to God? Amen. Send anybody but not me. That's his cry. And in Exodus 4.14, God was angry. He was angry. Was, he was, anger was kindled against Moses. Now, okay, just see, hang out with me. All right. So who does he send to help Moses? Let me see. I think his name is Aaron. I want you to know that Aaron turned out more times to be a hindrance than a help. It's Aaron that led the people into idolatry. All right? It's Aaron that led the murmuring with Miriam because he married the Ethiopian woman. All right? But hear me, hear me. Moses was willing to trust a weak man of flesh than the living God of heaven. I'm coming to the last one now. In the NIV, verse 13, Moses says, Oh Lord, please send someone else to do it. All right. What's he saying? Somebody else can do it better. Somebody else can do it better. Somebody else can do it better. Well, most of us understand that this morning. We understand. He's making here in Luke 6 46 it says but why do you call me Lord Lord and do not say the things which I say and do not do the things which I 
say. You understand that Moses called him Lord. It's, it's in the scripture, Lord. Yet he refuses to obey his orders. And we do the same. Let me run it by you again. But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? So God, in his anger, appoints Aaron to be a spokesman for Moses. Sometimes God will give you exactly what you want. <laughs> One of the most painful experiences you will ever have is when God gives you exactly what you want. Right? Psalms 106, verse 12. Now, y'all y'all died on me, man. My God, I'm the one working here, and y'all dead. Yeah, my God. Is there anybody hearing me? Is there anybody hearing me in the house today? Is there anybody in the house? Still in the house. Anybody? Anybody? The Bible says in 106 of Psalm, verse 12, then they believed his words, they sang his praises. Verse 13, they soon forgot his works. They did not wait for his counsel, but lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tested God in the desert. Verse 15, and he gave them their request. But sent leanness into their soul. Leanness. Is it possible that part of the struggle that you have today is you ask something from God for your flesh and it somehow ease what you're dealing with and maybe, just maybe, if I have that, God will work through me. So he gave you that, but with it he sent leanness to your soul. A wasting. That's what it tells us here in Psalms. A wasting. A leanness to the soul. My God. My God. Well, the five I can'ts are far outweighed by I can do all things through Christ's strength. What would happen this morning? If every one of us in this room would invite somebody to church, what would happen? I was with somebody last night, and you know, I, we were talking about the Cubs, and truck driving, and all that stuff. And he finally asked me, "I understand you're a pastor. I've been waiting a long time to hear something even close to what I do. What would happen?" If we just simply say yes to God. That every excuse that we have used, we would rip it up and say, I'll do whatever you want me to do, God. Sir. What would happen? You see, Moses said, you know, well, I'm not eloquent. I really can't talk well. Do you understand that when you read through Exodus and Numbers and Deuteronomy, you see less and less of Aaron and a whole lot more of Moses. And one of the most magnificent farewell speech is found in the book of Deuteronomy. And it's Moses that's doing the talking. Hallelujah. You see, you can. You can do all things. Christ who strengthens you. You've been strutting around and thinking so well of yourself as long as you didn't have to do something for him. And whenever anybody put any pressure on you to do something, you immediately begin to resist and give the reasons why you can't. You are forgetting what the Word of God says. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I close with this. You may want to write this down because this is good. 
I'm not, I, I, this is not my statement, but you need to write this down because this is good. The will of God will never lead you where the power of God can't enable you. Are you hearing me? The will of God will never lead you where the power of God can't enable you. It is the will of God that this house be full. Okay, I just, I don't know where the rest is at. Maybe he was still writing. Okay. The will of God will never lead you where the power of God can't enable you. It is the will of God that this house be full. Well, have fun, Pastor. Oh, I know that's, that's how a lot of people operate. In your hands, Pastor, you do it. It's Pastor Appreciation Month. Okay, Pastor, we'd appreciate if you'd do it. <laughs> oh, there are some faithful people in this house that are working in the kingdom of God. There are. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, it's time to walk over every obstacle that you or your enemy is put in your way. And if God puts an obstacle in front of you, I promise you this, he'll give you the strength to go over that obstacle. Hallelujah. He will. He will. Five, I can't. So who am I? What is your name? What if they don't believe me? What if they don't believe me? What if they don't believe me? Well, if, if it makes you feel any better, ladies and gentlemen, not everybody believed Jesus either. If it makes you feel any better, he did miracles and people still didn't believe him. But if it makes you feel better, there were those that did believe. And those that did believe would be accused of turning the world upside down. And they didn't have Facebook. They couldn't text. They didn't have cell phones. They didn't have nice cars. I mean, my God, they didn't even have the U.S. Post Office. UPS and all the stuff we got right now. They didn't have radios. They didn't have TVs. But they took the message of a risen Savior. And it's an apostle that writes that statement in 4.13 of Philippians. I can. I can. Everybody say, I can. I can. Hallelujah. So let's turn our I won'ts into I can. Because he strengthens me. Somebody, somebody's waiting for you. Somebody's waiting for you. Somebody wants to know about a delivering God. Somebody wants to know that they can be healed. Somebody wants to know that their past can be washed away. Somebody wants to know that there's victory that be found even in this sin-cursed world. Somebody wants to know. Somebody wants. Let's pray right now. Let's pray right now. Somebody wants to know. Somebody wants to know. Somebody wants to know. Somebody wants to know the power of God. Somebody wants to know when you pray with them that they begin to feel God. But in order to feel God, 
You must act. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can. I can. I can. I can. My God. My God. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. Oh, God. I pray right now, Father, you would open our eyes, oh God, to see what you want to do. Open, your, open our eyes to see what you want to do in our individual lives, God. Open our eyes, God. It's time for us to get away from our excuses, God. It's time for us to quit blaming other people why we are what we are, God. And my God, we need to simply act in faith. Keep our eyes on you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Does anybody in this house... Feel God moving on them today. Hallelujah. If you feel God moving on them, why don't we just come to the altar and let's just pray today. If you feel God moving on you, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just come to the altar and pray. Just come for a few moments and seek his face. Amen. Come and get saturated with hallelujah. Jesus today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.